Hi everybody. Jews all over the world are going to get ready to celebrate the holiday of Sukkot this Friday night. And of course, with the onset of Sukkot, we have the opportunity to do two beautiful mitzvot. The first is to enjoy ourselves to have a special Yom Tov meal inside a sukkah, whether it's our sukkah, somebody else's sukkah, it's not important. But just have that experience of sitting under the canopy of the schach, having faith in Hashem, enjoying our relationship with our family and with God. In addition to that, beginning Sunday this year, we have the additional mitzvah to grab, to hold on to the arba, meaning the four species, and to use them in the context of our tefillah and to say a bracha over holding them and shaking them. But it's interesting that our Chachamim remind us that the Torah wants us to know that in addition to eating in a sukkah or dwelling in a sukkah, in addition to the lulav and etrog, there's an additional aspect, an additional dimension to our experience of Sukkot, and that is the Hayita Ach Sameach. That Hashem says on this holiday specifically, Hashem wants us to be only happy, only besimcha. And the word that the Torah uses to emphasize that is Ach Sameach, Vahayita, and you shall be Ach Sameach, only happy. Now it's interesting that the Torah uses the word Ach because there are more common words in Hebrew that would express the idea of just being only happy. Those who know Hebrew would know that another word would be Rak. Vahayita, Rak Sameach. You should be only happy, meaning to the exclusion of other sorts of emotions. No sadness. No anxiety. Let yourself enjoy the holiday. But why does the Torah use a less common word, ach, spelled aleph, chaf, sofit? And the Gemara says that that word, ach, usually has a connotation of some sort of limitation. When it's used in other contexts in the Torah, it's used in order to somehow limit or to restrict some aspect of the experience. But why would the Torah want to include a word that's restrictive, that's limiting? Isn't the idea to expand our simcha rather than to sort of allude to the notion of a restriction, a diminishment of it? Just say rak sameach. Why say ach sameach? Maybe the Torah is trying to tell us something about our lives. Our lives are complicated. Everybody's life is complicated. Everybody's juggling so many things, and sometimes we're juggling so many things that we feel we can never stop. We can never sort of really feel the simcha that we've read about, that's depicted in movies. It's not for me. Maybe we'll man another time, but not now. And the Torah says, you know what? Your life doesn't have to be perfect in order for you to be content in order for you to feel that feeling of simcha, that's that feeling that a Jew has deep in his neshama when he knows he's doing or she's doing the right thing, that doesn't come when everything falls perfectly into place. Sometimes there are restrictions in our lives. Sometimes there are limitations that are imposed upon me from outside forces that I can't change. So does that mean that because of those limitations, I can't feel simcha? So the Torah says, Ach Sameach, learn that you can enjoy that moment. Learn that you can be in the fullness of that second and enjoy the Simcha, the Hayita Ach Sameach. Sukkot is that holiday which reminds us, leave your home, go into the imperfect Sukkah. And in fact, my skach blew off today. I have to fix it. That's how imperfect it is. Be in that imperfect place, and in that imperfect place, recognize the perfection of the simcha of the moment. Jews and families enjoying their relationship with each other and with God, and recognizing the blessings. That's simcha. The hayita ach sameach. I want to wish all, every one of you, chag sameach, enjoy the simcha, enjoy the experience, enjoy your sukkot.